four basic financial statements of the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. This is all chapter one material from our textbook, Financial Accounting, by Robert Libby, Patricia Libby, and Daniel Shaw. This is for ACT 211, uh, Principles of Accounting. In that course, we're going to focus mostly on the balance sheet and the income statement, although we will come across the statement of retained earnings and talk a little bit about that and also the statement of cash flows. But the major focus will be on the balance sheet and the income statement. Now these are two very important outputs of the accounting system. The balance sheet reports the amount of sale, of, excuse me, the amount of assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity of an accounting entity at a point in time. It's as of a point in time uh, that this is uh, reflective of. So, for example, you might see a, a balance sheet as of December 31st of 2011. And that would be the assets, the liabilities, and the stockholders' equity as of December 31st, 2011. The income statement reports the revenues less the expenses for an accounting period. So it's a span of time as opposed to a point in time. So the income statement for a particular company might show the 12 months preceding, or another way to put it, 12 months ending December 31st, 2011, for example. So a span of time. Now it's important for accounting students to understand what is meant by assets, by liabilities, by stockholders' equity. If you don't understand that, you'll have trouble understanding the balance sheet. So we will clarify that in the, in the course of our work uh, throughout this semester, especially the beginning of the semester. I think it's very important for you to focus on these definitions. Same thing with the income statement. If you really don't understand what revenues are and expenses are, then this isn't going to make much sense to you. So you, you need to get these definitions down. The statement of retained earnings and the statement of cash flows, we'll come upon those in later sessions and talk more about that. This is a very important formula in accounting. It's called the accounting equation. It is actually the formula that's embedded in the balance sheet. It's assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity, and I recommend that you memorize this formula. So now, uh, think of it as that the assets are the economic resources that are owned by the business, the liabilities are the amounts owed and the various obligations of the business, and the stockholders equity is basically the investment that the stockholders, the owners, have made in the business. So the economic resources come about because we have liabilities and stockholders equity. As it shows on this PowerPoint, the sources of financing for the economic resources are the liabilities that basically come from the creditors and the stockholders equity, which is funding that comes from the stockholders. Here's uh, the typical account titles that you'll see on the balance sheet. Accounts are uh, very important uh, items uh, that we track in a business all the major um, financial items of, of, of a business are kept track of and what are called accounts. Uh, they're almost like little calculators, little summaries of uh, final balances for these various items. So we can see that they're organized in this, um, in this display, in this graphic, by um, assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. I'm not going to go down this entire list right now, but this is a very good list. This could be like a master list for you to use to um, maybe do your own research into what each of these uh, titles represent. Make sure you understand what is meant by cash, what is meant by short-term investment, what is meant by accounts receivable, uh, and so on and so forth. Write down the list. You could use it as a checklist. You should develop an understanding of at what each one of these items is. Now we're going to come across these different items, these different assets, these various liabilities, these kinds of stockholders equity accounts when we work through our problems, when we work through our solution, uh, the solutions to the end of chapter exercises and problems. We're going to see these terms used in the various narratives that we read and in the, ex in the paragraphs and the word problems that we come upon we're trying to solve our exercises and our problems. So it's very important to develop this kind of vocabulary to have a clear understanding of what, what every one of these items means. I don't necessarily think you have to memorize these definitions, but you certainly should have a sense. So for example, if I say we're talking about inventory, you should know that that 
specifically means that it is merchandise or it is finished goods that a particular uh, company has that they are selling for these are items to be sold. Whereas supplies, it's different. Supplies are not inventory. Supplies are to be used in the course of doing our business and producing things and getting our work done, but we don't sell supplies. Certainly a company like Staples Office Supplies, they sell supplies, but when I, that, that's the exception. A regular a business like General Motors does not sell office supplies or other types of supplies, so to speak. They sell automobiles. Automobiles are their inventory, but certainly General Motors uses supplies. So you have to know the difference. Equipment is different from buildings, and buildings is different from land, and intangibles it's quite different from anything that's tangible like equipment buildings and land so you must know the distinctions you must have this clear thinking and develop this business accounting and finance vocabulary on the liability side we see the term payable used a number of times accounts payable notes payable taxes payable bonds payable anytime you see that word payable let that remind you that these these are amounts that are owed to someone. So, for example, accounts payable is money that is owed to the vendors and the suppliers that the company utilizes. And notes payable, a note is a loan, and so that is a loan that is owed. And taxes, you know what taxes are. Taxes payable are taxes that are owed. Income taxes, real estate taxes, uh, sales taxes, any kind of tax that is owed to a government agency is uh, payable. Bonds payable. Bonds are another type of long term, they're like a long term debt or a long term loan. So you should understand what all these items are. Unearned revenue will come upon in one of our chapters and accrued expenses are very, very common. They're almost, uh, they're very similar to payables. And then there's stockholders equity and actually the difference between the assets and the liabilities in a mathematical sense, assets minus liabilities equals stockholders' equity. It's kind of that net worth of the business. It is um, usually made up of at least two parts, one called contributed capital and the other called retained earnings. Contributed capital is money that the owners have contributed, have given to the business to fund it, to get it up and running, and to help it to continue its operations. When you hear about people owning shares of common stock, for example, that's the contributed capital. Retained earnings, on the other hand, is uh, a type of um, uh, equity. It is money that is kept in the business from the earnings, from the profits, from the wealth that is being created as a result of doing business. Here's an example of a balance sheet you see up at the top right-hand corner of this graphic. There is a um, little uh, uh, you know, the formula is shown there, the, the balance sheet formula, the assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. And then we see the format of this company's uh, called Maxi Drive Corporation's balance sheet as of December 31st, 2010. I want to call your attention to those titles there. It's very important to note sort of the anatomy of this report, that the name of the company is listed right at the top so we know what entity this is. This is the Maxi Drive Corp balance sheet. It's not John Smith's balance sheet or Mary Jones's balance sheet or the uh, ABC company or whatever. It's specifically the balance sheet of this entity, Maxi Drive Corp. And it must be noted. It must be shown there so that we know that. And that the type of report it is, it's called the balance sheet. So that's the title of this report. And that means something. You know, when I see balance sheet, I immediately think of the balance sheet formula. I immediately know what is going to be revealed here. The kinds of thoughts that run through my mind are things like I'm going to see the financial position of this company. I'm going to see what they own. I'm going to see what they owe. I'm going to see what their wealth is, their net wealth is as far as this entity is concerned. So we see um, this is in thousands of dollars as of December 31st of 2010. Again, that point in time, that idea of a snapshot. And uh, we see that this company has total assets of Twenty-seven million two hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. It looks like it's twenty-seven thousand two two sixty-one, but it's not. It's twenty-seven million because it's in thousands of dollars, and therefore you must remember to add three zeros to the end of that number. So it's twenty-seven comma two sixty-one comma zero 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 in reality, which is twenty-seven million. 
That's what the total assets are, and it's made up of cash and accounts receivable and inventory and plant equipment and land. And that's totaled up, and 27 to 61 in thousands of dollars is the answer there. And then the liabilities are made up of two pots, accounts payable and notes payable, and the total liabilities of 16,156. Uh, excuse me, 16,156,000. Again, I, you got to remind yourself to add those three zeros to the end of it when you talk about these numbers. And you can see that the total assets are greater than the total liabilities, which means that there is equity here. There is a residual amount sort of left over after you deduct out the liabilities. And if you, your eyes can go down below here, you'll see that the total equity is 11105 thousand dollars so that's that's really the net amount of, um, of worth net worth of the company and the equity is made up of two pots two million dollars of capital that was contributed by the owners which we call stock holders in the case of a corporation and retained earnings of nine million one hundred and five thousand dollars which is the earnings the profits uh, the wealth that this organization is generated by uh, buying and selling stuff uh, over time and that's a for all time since the company was uh, uh, was founded, and so the total stockholders' equity eleven thousand eleven million one hundred five thousand dollars, and the total liabilities and stockholders' equity must equal the total assets. You see that how they're equal? You always have that equilibrium. That's why it's called a balance sheet. 